We're now joined by Sean LaTourette, who is the commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Mr. Commissioner, good to have you with us. It is a pleasure, sir. Thanks for having me. You got eight. Tell us, um, Commissioner, what infrastructure equity is and why it matters. Whew. Well, New Jersey has a deep need for investment in environmental infrastructure that includes our water infrastructure, flood resistance infrastructure, beach replenishment. And we want to make sure that in deploying these investments from the Department of Environmental Protection that we're reaching all communities in need, uh, especially those that are in underserved areas that may not have seen historically the type of investment necessary to get things like lead out of our water uh, or those communities that uh, face significant environmental challenges, but maybe too uh, strapped for capacity to really take advantage of some of the programs that the DEP offers. So we want to make sure that these funding opportunities reach everyone. To me, that's what equity is. Commissioner, let me, let me follow up on this. So the water issue you raised, it, it seems to me, not just as a journalist, but as someone who just observes what's going on, that it's a crisis when it's a crisis, but there's a crisis. Does it make any sense to you? It makes all the sense in the world to me. Um, I think about it this way. Uh, I think about the number seven, right? The number of times I turn on the tap just this morning before 8 a.m., right? To wash up, feed the dogs, brew the coffee, press my shirt, brush my teeth, take a drink, right? Water is life. It's critical to everything we do, the health of our families, the success and productivity of our businesses, everything depends upon it. But to your point, we often don't pay the type of attention that is necessary to our water infrastructure investment needs until it's so painfully visible because the water treatment plants and pipes that, that bring that water to us, they're often hidden from view. And so we can easily take advantage uh, or take rather for granted the fact that the clean water is going to arrive and the dirty water will just disappear. And so we, we tend to focus on more urgent or just more obvious things until, you know, that catastrophic event forces open our eyes. Along those lines, I don't want to be overly philosophical with you, but, but this is a big question about democracy as well. And I'll explain what I mean. So we have a, a series called Democracy at a Crossroads, and, and a big part of that is the role of the media. To what degree do you believe, uh, Commissioner, that we in the media have done a strong enough job in helping citizens understand the importance of water infrastructure, infrastructure overall, until and unless we got a picture. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, a crisis, a horrific situation. Look at this d disgusting brown, dirty water, meaning we have a responsibility here. H how well, ha how effective have we done and what do we need to do more? So... I, I can't uh, tell you that that laying the the issue of the inattention to environmental infrastructure at the feet of the media is, is helpful in, in any way, shape, or form. I think that in our modern society, it is easy to take certain things for granted, right? We live in a country and in a state that I believe takes good care of its residents, and we can, by by virtue of that, become inattentive to the things that have always been there for us. But New Jersey, one of the more historic states in terms of our development patterns, we have really old infrastructure. It's nobody's fault. It's the age of America's bones and they are failing, right? And so we've got to be more attentive to them than we once were because we're at a point that that infrastructure investment is absolutely critical. Just look to the last few months, Steve, right? Major drinking water main breaks wreaking havoc upon several northern New Jersey communities, limiting That's water right. availability. Right? I'm in Montclair, so think about Nutley and Bloomfield and Belleville and... Absolutely. And, they were they were the in and, and the then. northern part, North Newark, where my mom is, I mean, then it was a crisis, but that crisis, I'm sorry for interrupting, Commissioner, we should not be shocked about that. No, we shouldn't be shocked. But from, from a layperson's point of view, it seems easy, right? Water is simple, except that it's not. Water is a work of chemistry. 
that requires so many people, deeply experienced people who really know how to balance that chemistry in order to bring us clean water. And then the infrastructure that carries it to us, it needs attention, but we don't see it. And it's just so easy to, yeah. to not think about it. And if you're wondering why I'm obsessing about this is because there are so many people that suffer at the back end when we we there is a crisis, but we need to have these discussions right now uh, before that. Uh, Commissioner, what is the New Jersey Water Bank? So the New Jersey Water Bank is, is a partnership between the Department of Environmental Protection and the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank. It is the primary and cheapest method for local governments, which run the majority of our water systems, to receive funding for the upgrades that are necessary. And so we work through the DEP and the iBank to put together funding packages like the a lender. The iBank meaning the infrastructure bank? Meaning the infrastructure bank. Okay, good. They're partner together. DEP can bring to the table significant state and federal grant and grant-like funds. And then we take those funds and we leverage them with private market funds that the iBank has access to so that we can generate a very large amount of investment for a very low, low interest rate. Because if the government is offering you low interest or no interest, and you then package that together with market rate funds at a very, very well-rated bond rate that the iBank has, we can take a large multi-million dollar project and drive that interest rate to the floor so that the debt service for a local community is very low. So, but hold on, but Sean, your, your local communities need to apply for those loans, correct? No question. And we don't see- and where, do they go? where do they go? Again, people in the local leaders should know this, but is it the DEP website or is the iBank website? Where is it? You go to dep.nj.gov slash WIP, W-I-I-P, for the Water Infrastructure Investment Plan. Last question. Um, for those who actually still debate and argue about climate change, it's real because, 30 seconds, go. We don't get to choose to believe in science. It just is. And the fact is that New Jersey is ground zero for some of the worst impacts of climate change. We're seeing them right now. And they only get worse in the years ahead, but we can be ready. Science. Listen, the commissioner has got an interesting point there. Commissioner Sean Latoretta of the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, commissioner, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. You got it. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. The Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care. The New Jersey Economic Development Authority. The New Jersey Education Association. New Jersey's Clean Energy Program. PSE&G. New Jersey Institute of Technology. Johnson & Johnson. And by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Promotional support provided by AM970 The Answer. And by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. New Jersey is home to the best public schools in the nation. And that didn't happen by accident. It's the result of parents, educators, and communities working together year after year to give our students a world-class education, no matter the challenge. Because parents and educators know that with a shared commitment to our public schools, our children can learn, grow, and thrive. And together, we can keep New Jersey's public schools the best in the nation.